Welcome back everybody for another tutorial on how to make Magic the Gathering altars. Today we are doing another Blood Moon. If you've been watching the channel, um, you might know that we did a Blood Moon not too long ago. Uh, and I've actually recorded this footage uh, of the painting at that same time, which is why I've got all these colors still lying around on my palette from the last one. Um, the budget store, brushes hanging out in the water. Uh, we got some sandpaper right here. The acrylics I'm using are like a, a, a budget starter pack, 10-pack um, of colors kind of deal. And um, we're just going to go ahead and get started here on this blood boon by grabbing our sandpaper. And this one's actually going to be a full art one. So um, we're going to send up this entire uh, rules text box, box as well as all the, all the edges of the card. Um, so the reason I recorded uh, two of these in a row is because... As you might be able to see in the video, you spend a lot of time just mixing colors and trying to get the colors right. But if you do two of the same cards or even more at the same same time, then you'll save yourself a lot of time mixing colors. If you're already in the flow, you've got your colors lying around, you kind of know um, how to mix the colors from the first one. The second one's going to go a lot quicker, especially if you still have the colors lying around on your palette. So here I'm just taking some um, some of the rose, some red, some yellows, a little bit of black, and basically same as the one we did before. We're just looking to make a dark color to to put down as our base layer around the edges of the card that are um, that we're trying to cover up. So here we go, top right corner, and I'm just smearing on some of this paint. Um, the color doesn't need to be 100% accurate at this stage. But the closer we can get it in one go, the better it's going to be regardless. So uh, it might not be 100% perfect at this time, but we're definitely just smearing it on and um, we can match the colors a little bit better later. It's going to take a couple layers to cover up all these borders anyway, so... We're just smearing this on as we go, covering the entire text box. You can see the transparency of the paint, um, you know, with the with the white background of the text box still shining through. It's gonna take a couple layers to cover all of that up, so don't panic on your first on your first layer. Top part as well. Boom! So that's our very first layer on this card. Happened pretty quick. Um, so now we're going to mix up some more colors and go in for round two. Basically look, just looking to um, cover up the, the border, even though the color might still not be 100% perfect, at least uh, the underlying border won't be shining through anymore. So that's, that's basically our goal with this next layer. Same here for the text box area. I'm just dropping in. Um, kind of thinking about the composition at this stage, just drop in some darker colors, what I think are going to be shadows of rocks that we're putting in later on. But I like to, to think about these things a little bit ahead of time. Here I grab a different brush, it's really flat, it's really um, uh, narrow. And I'm just making a highlight color at this stage, some yellow, some white, some red. Mixing it up. And here in this top right corner, uh, or in the right corner, we're just going to try and drop in a couple of highlights of rocks that are going to be laying on the floor. Um, just trying to extend the art that's already on the card a little bit further as our first attempt to match these highlight colors. And all I'm doing is I'm using this very flat kind of brush, taking the tip, and I'm just smearing some of this highlight color on. And... Um, Seems to be working all right to get a rock kind of texture. We're going to be doing lots of touching up later on. But as a first go to try and get that highlight color, I'm pretty happy with how this went. The color in the top right corner is not 100% right yet. Um, a little bit of border shining through as well, so we're going to be touching that up soon. I'm grabbing this brush we used before. It's a little bit uh, thicker. It's a little bit softer, uh, which is ideal for... Um, kind of like soft touching up gradient kind of work. The softer the brush, the easier it is uh, to, to get gradients with. 
if you have a very stiff brush I always struggle to get clean gradients and the sky here in this blood moon is a very soft dark and dark red kind of gradient so I'm using this soft brush to try and mimic what is already on the card and as you can see I'm bouncing between these different different shades of that same color with a little bit more white involved to get a little bit more gray sometimes a little bit more rose to get a little bit more purplish kind of hue and um, we basically fiddle and fiddle and fiddle until it looks right same on the other side and now the top edges they look pretty clean at the moment so this is our third layer and with that third layer you definitely want to get to the point of um, of matching the color 100% you know with our first one we just did the dark undertone and then our second attempt was pretty close but now with the third attempt it should really um, start to look like the color that's on the card we can go too many layers so if you can do it in two layers even better if you need three still okay but we definitely don't want to go up to five or six to get this right because the thicker the paint the more you're gonna feel it through um, you know on the, the texture of the paint and you'll feel that through your sleeves when you sleeve these bad boys up so we're trying to keep it to a minimum here I'm just grabbing a shadowy color, it's some black, some red, and I'm just um, trying to cover up this text box again, but also thinking about shadows of rocks that I'm going to lay in there. So I cover up some bits a little bit more than others, leaving a couple of blank spots where the, um, the, the highlight color is going to go on top. And that highlight color, I'm kind of grabbing that now. It's still fairly on the dark side, um, the darker side of things, but um, it's not as bright as the actual highlight's going to be eventually. So I switched to my flat brush and I'm mixing up some yellows and some reds. And just with the very tip of this brush that I've kind of like dragged through the paint to make it chiseled, um, I'm just smearing on some of these highlight colors to get a rock like texture just with the very tip of the brush definitely don't want to push too hard and just pull in this horizontal kind of way across the card and whatever paint gets pulled off that'll be a rock try not to overdo it too much although it doesn't really matter at this point if you smear on a little bit more than intended like this big rock over on the side I put on a little bit too much but then I was like oh you know kind of worked out anyways Here in this corner, I'm using a little bit more of a, a vertical kind of stroke, but still thinking of the same thing. Just using that edge of the chisel brush to drop in these rock-like textures. And this wall is kind of going up vertical, so that's why I'm using the vertical strokes now. More highlight colors to be mixed. And basically what we're trying to do is every time we go back for another highlight, we go just a tiny bit lighter. And that's what's going to create the depth in your painting, but also makes these rocks look real, you know, like the moon shining on these things, um, on these rocks, and there's going to be parts that are more lit up, there's going to be parts that are less lit up. But especially because it's nighttime, there's not actually a whole lot that's that bright. So just the very top of each rock, that's what we're highlighting, and not much else. And we do that all the way top to bottom. Now these rocks that are in the foreground are a little bit closer so we can put in a little bit more highlight there just because the closer things are the more contrast it's going to get. Here I'm using that same color to touch up this glow that's heading off to the right of the card and um, basically I'm trying to get this glow so there's lots of tapping involved. The more you can um, kind of like drag your paint along um, the fluffier it's gonna look and that's kind of like that hazy red glow I'm trying to get onto the card I'm using the same technique and the same kind of color for this top part of the card it's getting a little bit of glow from the moon
lots of touching up, lots of fiddling. And that's probably a thing about altering cards in general, it is a lot of fiddling to get things right. So if you're into that, good news, if you're not so much into that, then you're gonna you're gonna have to put some effort in to get things right. Here I'm grabbing the shadow colors again. Um, just trying to set these rocks apart a little bit more. Um, basically just trying to wherever there's a highlight on the top of the rock there needs to be a shadow on the other side like at the bottom of each rock and I'd like to be to have these rocks a little bit smaller so I'm kinda like using these shadowy colors to break them apart a little bit just using that same technique as before where we just like drag in the tip of the brush uh, horizontally across the card and that creates these effects Here we're going into highlight colors again, just touching up the tops of all these rocks at the bottom. They can be a little bit more lit up because they're closer to the foreground. So the closer things are, the higher the contrast has to be between light and shadow. Here I'm grabbing the smallest brush I have. I use that for um, basically the smallest details. And as we go with more highlights and lighter highlights. Um, I also like to switch to smaller brushes just because these lightest of lightest highlights they need to be very subtle. So I use a very small brush for that. Just trying to use the very tip of the brush. Same technique just dragging it along the edges of each rock and letting paint fall off as we drag it along. And whatever falls off is on the card. We definitely don't want to overdo it just on the top of each of these rocks, just a little little touch. And we do that for pretty much every single rock, maybe not all of them, but a, m most of them, just to set them apart a little bit more. Here I smeared on a little bit too much, it really stands out as you can see. So to save it, I just grabbed some paper towel, tried to dab to get most of the paint off, and then we're just going back with some mid-reds and some shadowy colors to touch it up and fix it. And um, before you know it, no one will ever know I made a little mistake over there. A little bit of the shadow color too, put it on, and boom, no one will ever know. Uh, here I just moved to a clean workspace. I noticed that every time I get too caught up in color mixing, um, I have less space to actually put my card down and, and have a look at things. And uh, If you're not careful, you're going to rub the back of your card into some paint that's on the cardboard or what you've been trying to mix and then the back of your card gets dirty and you need to clean that up. It's just a big bit of a hassle. So I moved to a clean piece of cardboard, or at least to the side. And um, here we're just doing some final touches on this right side of the sky. I'm, I've really struggled with this one to get that side, the colors right. Um, I believe in the other video I made and the other Blood Moon Altar, it, everything went a little bit smoother on that side of things, but for some reason it didn't really want to come together on this one until until very very late, which is about now. Just touching in some of the glow of the moon. And at this point, most of the painting is done, obviously. Um, 
just a bunch of fiddling to, to up the contrast a little bit more here at the bottom. I'm grabbing this very fluffy brush. It's very old. It's very hairy. Um, just to grab some um, shadowy colors and touch them in. So with the, the hairy, fluffy brush, um, you can get some really nice like bush-like textures and grass-like textures. So I just dropped a tiny bit of that in to make it look slightly different. This is always my least favorite part of making altars. We gotta clean up the borders. So I've got my toothpick looking um, device and I dipped it in a little bit of water. Made sure I shook off any of um, the water drops that are on our scraping device. And I'm just gonna scrape along the edges to, to clean them up a little bit. This is my least favorite part. I hate it. It's super fiddly. I always scrape off too much paint and then I have to go back and, and retouch them up and stuff it's super annoying um, but it's worthwhile in the end so this is just uh, a little bit of water on on um, on the scraping device and every now and then you'll see me dab um, the card because because the thing is wet it's gonna absorb or like loosen up some of the paint and that'll kind of liquefy and then we dab it to clean it up and then um, yeah it should turn out nicely here I'm just uh, making a little correction of what I scraped off too much just grab my tiny little brush to um, to touch that up a little bit. And with that, the painting is pretty much done. The only thing that's left, I believe, is putting a signature on it. So I'm just cleaning my brush, grabbing some white, and um, putting my signature on. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new, whether it's about painting, altering, um, or even how to paint rocks, those kind of things. Um, if you like the video, leave a like, maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And um, yeah, see you soon.